is DLC and is DLC worth your time and money? Now we all know what DLC means. DLC is downloadable content and it usually refers to video games in some form or another. And traditionally what DLC is, is downloadable content outside of the main game. So for instance, maybe you'll pay $60 for a game and then outside of that $60, the developer of the game will add additional content that you're gonna have to pay for called DLC. And a lot of games have them. Most games actually do have DLC in some form or another. Some people don't like to call DLC microtransactions. Like for instance, if you play a mobile game, a mobile game has microtransactions but you can kind of think of that as DLC as well. It's still downloadable content that you have to get outside of the main game that doesn't come with the main game and you have to pay for that. Now, is DLC worth it or not? It kind of really depends on the developer and it depends on the type of game that you're gonna be playing and how, how much they price it at because in the gaming industry, there's no set fee for DLC, so there's not a standard price that every developer has to charge for DLC. Unlike games, as you know, that there is pretty much a base amount of money for AAA games or first-party titles, however you like to call it. Most first-party AAA games, third-party games, big budget games anyway, are $60 a pop and it's been like that for quite some time now and that's pretty much the standard in the gaming industry but when it comes to DLC there's no standard of how much a developer can charge for DLC and on top of charging individually for just different DLC packs for instance maybe you'll have for instance a story based game like an RPG and then it'll have DLC maybe for $15, $10, whatever and then you'll also have a multiplayer game and a lot of times especially the multiplayer games they'll have something called season passes which is still a form of DLC, but it pretty much guarantees that you can get every DLC coming out for that game when it releases. You'll get it first and you'll get it early if you buy the season pass. For instance, the one DLC C pass I can think of off the top of my head is Call of Duty. Call of Duty games are known for season passes. I don't know what they go for. They usually go for like $20, $30, $40, and then you get every one coming out for that game of the end of the lifespan of that game. So if the game lasts a year, then you're guaranteed to get every DLC coming out to that game for a year and also one thing to note is not all DLC out there is DLC that you have to pay for. Technically DLC is downloadable content but technically if you think about it updates to games are technically kind of DLC like for instance some games that give you free DLC like the one game I can think of that has free DLC is the Splatoon series. Splatoon is one game they give you updates over time and that's pretty much the DLC however they just don't charge you money for the DLC you're getting all the DLC for free. Same thing with a game from Nintendo called ARMS. They pretty much just kept updating the game and you pretty much got free DLC that way. But that is a form of DLC. It's just not DLC you have to pay for. But the question is in this video, is DLC worth your time and money? It's always a big controversy in the gaming industry whether DLC is worth it or not. Some people like to say DLC is worth your time and money and other people are like, hmm, for me personally, if you're to ask the guy behind the camera, why do I think of DLC since I am a big gamer and I've been playing games since DLC first came out, I think on last gen, the Xbox 360 and uh, the uh, PS3 or as a, a Nintendo was kind of late to the party on DLC. Personally, I think DLC depends on the game and depends on how much they're going to charge you. Some people won't buy it because I know if you buy a base game at $60 and then you were to buy the DLC for the game, I know DLC for games can get expensive and you're going to be paying over the regular price of a game and some people think $60 for a game is already expensive and I do have to agree $60 for a game is quite expensive and on top of that you buy the DLCs for the game you're talking a lot of money for a game that was originally only $60 and the thing with DLC is all DLCs are not equally the same in terms of quality. Some DLCs could be shorter than others. Some DLCs could be longer than others. And not all DLC has to be extra content towards the game that's going to add more playability. There is DLC I didn't even talk about that's actually cosmetic DLC. Those are still DLCs. Like for instance, some companies will give you DLCs that extend the life span of the game. They'll give you like a new story mode to play, an RPG or a story based game. Or in a multiplayer game, they'll give you new maps, new guns, new items to play in the multiplayer aspect of that game. But then some companies will just give you DLC that'll just give you cosmetics. Like one I can think of off the top of my head has to be Rocket League and Fortnite. 
Fortnite. Rocket League and Fortnite both have paid DLCs, but they're only cosmetic ones. When it comes to cosmetic ones, I tend to stay away from those ones. They're not necessarily a bad deal. Most of those are pretty cheap, like two, three, four dollars for just skins for like your character maybe, or a gun in the game, or an outfit in the game or things like that. But the thing is though, if the game ever shuts down, then you could be out of money if you spent spent for all those skins and all those D, all those DLCs you bought for the game that were just cosmetic. Well, I guess it's the same thing with regular DLC, to be honest. If I'm gonna be 100% fair there, just because with regular DLC, if the company ever goes broke, goes bankrupt, or if the PSN store goes down, or if the uh, Nintendo eShop goes down and some something happens to your DLC, let's say for instance, it corrupts, it bricks, or whatnot, then you could be out and out of your DLC that you paid for and you may not be able to use it. So DLC in general is still a risky thing to buy in the gaming industry. But let's talk about what types of DLCs do I like, do I don't like, and uh, things like that. First off, one company that always has DLC in their games regardless of a new release, it just becomes a standard thing, is the Call of Duty scene. The Call of Duty scene is one game out there that, that has that had DLC pretty much ever since the first one came out and they've been doing it for pretty much years on years on years. Typically what happens with a Call of Duty game is a Call of Duty game will release and then following the Call of Duty game you usually get like four different DLC packs when you actually uh, uh, get the game and when you actually uh, play the game for about a year they release four different uh, DLC maps for the game. That's not necessarily bad or anything but it's kind of feels kind of greedy if you ask me because we all know when we buy that initial $60 game they're gonna have four or five different DLC packs that are gonna be coming throughout the lifespan of a, of a Call of Duty game but then I guess you don't have to buy those if you really don't want to but then one problem with some DLCs in some video games is the fact that uh, the community becomes split because some people will buy a DLC and then some people will not buy a DLC and then some people will be playing that DLC and some people will not so then you'll have a less of a of a fan base or less of a video game base to play that game online with because the community is split. And that's one thing uh, also going talking about splitting a community up with DLC. That's one thing uh, three, three, four, five industries, the one who makes Halo currently on Halo 5, they realized that was a totally a bad idea. They didn't want to split their community in half and have some people playing different people and they wanted everyone to be playing the same thing and make sure you have enough players to play with. That's why in Halo 5 that came out, I think in 2014, they wanted to make sure that DLC was all free. So all maps, all guns, and pretty much everything that DLC, uh, DLC wise was free to the community and I absolutely think that was a great idea not just for the free aspect of it of course I'm not just trying to be a greedy person I understand it takes time and development for these companies to make DLC so you should be paying your hard-earned money for someone to code this thing into the game whether it be new maps new stories new whatever to the game I understand that but uh just uh, not splitting up the community is absolutely a good thing and I think more developers should try to implement that especially into a multiplayer game they should realize some people can't uh, buy the DLC and some people can buy the DLC and then it makes the lobbies of the game much more smaller because some people are playing the DLC only lobbies and some people are playing the regular lobbies and it splits up the fan base and I just don't think that's a great idea but how can you really get around that if you want to make DLC for your game that's part of a multiplayer game I guess you really have no choice but to make the DLC free and whatnot or just give out free updates that's pretty much how it goes how do I think of DLC as a whole and do I buy DLC and whatnot I do buy DLC it just depends on the game solely like one game I thought it was really a good deal for the DLC was Mario Kart 8 Mario Kart 8 from Nintendo did have DLC it was the first Mario Kart from Nintendo to actually implement DLC and the DLC in that game was a very very good deal. It was probably the best DLC deal I can think of in the gaming industry. It was like $12 for four new cups. So that's, I think, 16 new tracks to the game for only $11. And you got also on top of the free maps that they gave you or the free race tracks they gave you in Mario Kart 8, you also got new characters and new carts to the game. And that was absolutely a fantastic deal. And there is some companies out there that don't give out good DLC, DLC deals. For instance, one company that d did not give out a good deal DLC DLC deal was Nintendo, actually, believe it or not. I was just talking about Nintendo, but one of them wasn't actually a good deal. The one deal I can think of that Nintendo did not go to did not do a good job of actually selling was all the DLC for Super Smash Brothers uh 
uh, 3DS. The 3DS version of that game, if you were to buy all the new characters for that game, it would actually be more than the game's worth. So for instance, let's say the game was $40, $30 when it came out on the original, uh, or when it came out on the 3DS, and if you bought all the uh, extra DLC characters to the game, then it would easily go over the initial price tag of the game, and that's just absolutely absurd and absolutely ridiculous. One thing a lot of people have a problem with in the gaming industry is the fact that some people feel like some of this DLC DLC content that we have to pay extra for kind of feels like it could have been ripped out content from a game like for instance one controversy that was floating around last year back in 2017 was the fact that Breath of the Wild some people felt like some of the extra content that you were getting in the game felt like it should have been in the game in the first place they just maybe ripped it out and sold it separately as DLC to get you to pay more more than the $60 value of the game because there were some items like a medallion that let you fast travel around Breath of the Wild and that could have been easily in the game for free. There's no reason for that. And one that lets you track all your steps around the game world. Why is that even ripped out of the game? It just technically doesn't make any sense why those things are ripped out of the game. A new story mode maybe or may not have been ripped out of the game. It's really hard to tell what companies are doing. Some companies are greedy like EA and like Activision. I'm not trying to hate on them. It's just the truth. We've known, we know they've done some bad things in the gaming uh, community and they are known to do bad stuff. One thing EA did bad with DLC apparently, I can't confirm this or deny this, but a lot of people were talking about how in one of the Mass Effect games they actually ripped out the ending of the game and then they sold it as DLC and that is absolutely stupid and pathetic and that just shows you how greedy companies are because they know gamers spend a lot of money. When it comes to entertainment, one of the most uh, one of the most industries where the people spend the most money in is gaming so they know if they were to sell the in the true ending for, uh, as DLC they know some people out there would actually uh, buy the uh, DLC package and they would spend it and some DLC in the gaming industry is overpriced for what you're getting sometimes you don't get a lot of content for your money sometimes the quality is not there the list goes on of problems it just really depends on each developer it depends on the time and aspect it really just depends on a whole bunch of different aspects so I can't necessarily say in this video is DLC worth your time and money is it worth your time and money it really just depends personally for me on the game and how much the DLC is priced and what you get for the DLC one DLC that I thought was also a very good deal was the Borderlands 2 DLC. I did end up buying the season pass and it's pretty rare for me to buy season passes. I'm not one of those people that always go around buying them. Usually when it comes to DLC, I like buying each individual package when it comes out so I can know if I'm going to buy, like it or not because there is, there was a couple Borderlands 2 uh, DLCs I really wasn't a fan of like the Handsome Jack or not Handsome Jack it was I forgot one of the one of the packs where you're hunting around or something I can't remember I wasn't really a fan of that the pirate one was okay but it wasn't amazing there's was only like one or two in there that was amazing but since I guess I put a lot of hours in that I didn't really feel like I got gypped with the DLC for uh for Borderlands and the thing with Gearbox was with the whole Borderlands 2 DLC is they really tried to make make it feel like you were in different areas. Sure, the, the uh, enemies you were fighting in the DLC were just stripped down characters or just reskinned uh, re enemies from the base game, but it was still enough that made, it made me feel like the DLC was worth it and they had new weapons, new items, new... Uh, new quests to do and things like that so it really just depends but overall sometimes DLC and video games can be a quite sketchy area is it worth it is it not worth it those are just some of my opinions on DLC as a whole now you know my opinions on DLC and I thought this was just a very fun video to make talking about DLC and I'm gonna be doing just random videos like this throughout my channel so stay tuned to my channel I'll be talking about more stuff in the gaming industry more stuff in the tech industry just more stuff overall anyway guys this this is Wayne from My Tech News, signing out.